so we have now a higher dimensional system and we consider systems in which there's a bifurcation and from our previous investigations we figured that bifurcations actually occur in a lower dimension and so what we'd really like to do is reduce the dynamics in this higher dimensional phase space to the dynamics on the lower dimensional central manifold so that's the goal and so the way we want to do that is well let's first draw it so let's assume we're in the phase plane so we have some two-dimensional system and let's assume we have um in this case the center eigenspace is maybe the x-axis and the stable eigenspace is the y-axis and so then we know that from the center manifold theorem that there is a center manifold which is uh, tangential to the center eigenspace so it could sort of look like this it goes through the fixed point which we assume is at the origin as always so we have this fixed point and we have that center manifold which is tangential to the center eigenspace and uh, as the simulations had suggested and the center manifold tells us is that this thing is now attractive as in we expect if we start with general initial conditions after some initial transient time it the trajectory will converge down towards the center manifold and then will evolve on the center manifold on a relatively slow uh, time scale and so that's the dynamics we want to capture and so because the center manifold is tangential to the center eigenspace we can parameterize the, the points on the center manifold say this point we can parameterize that simply by a coordinate on the center eigenspace and so we have this uh, point on the center manifold which is x y uh, we can write actually as x and the y coordinate is given by some function h of x and as x uh, evolve as this point evolves it can be parameterized by the position of x and so we'll get the evolution on the center manifold by having an evolution for, for the x-coordinate and as we extract that evolution from the basic equations we'll also get an equation for h of x which then actually gives us the center manifold okay so let's do that in a simple example so let's consider the following system um, So say we have x dot equals mu x plus xy minus gamma x cubed and y dot equals minus y plus x squared minus y squared. And so clearly if we uh, linearize around the origin then these nonlinear terms can all be ignored and we have a stable direction which is sent the uh, stable eigenspace in the y direction and we have if mu is equal to zero, we have a, a zero eigenvalue in the center eigenspace would be the x direction. Okay, so in order to have a center manifold, we actually have to take mu equals zero, meaning we're at the bifurcation point. Okay, and so how do we go about? Well, as I said, the goal is that we have uh, y expressed as h of x and so then the evolution uh, for y is sort of given by two different expressions one is of course just y dot is y dot but y dot is also given through chain rule via x dot and so we have two conditions for the evolution of y and therefore that gives us an equation for h so let's just do that um, so we have on the one hand as i said we have the equation for y dot right here and the other one is through the chain rule so we have y dot is equal to dh by dx because y is equal to h of x times x dot and that has to be equal to the other y dot so we can say that this has to be equal to minus y plus x squared minus y squared and now you see we have actually an equation for h because y is given by h x dot is given by this term 
which is given in terms of x and y, which again is given in terms of h. And so this equation here is actually an equation for h. So let's write that down. What do we get? We get dh by dx times x dot. And remember, we now have uh, at the bifurcation point, so mu is equal to zero. So that term is not there. So if x times h minus gamma x cubed, that's equal to minus h plus x squared minus h squared. So what's that? Well, that's a differential equation for h, which is nonlinear and non-constant coefficients because h depends on x. So this is actually a non-constant coefficient, nonlinear differential equation, which is in general hard to solve, or in other words, you can't solve it in general. However, we are focusing on the vicinity of the fixed point, which undergoes a bifurcation. And so therefore, just like any other things we've done, we expand everything we have in terms of the distance from the fixed points so we expand in, a, in X. And so uh, we know that, um, okay, we expand X, uh, H in terms of X. So if H of X, equal to an h0 plus an h1x plus an h2x squared plus an h3x cubed plus an h4x to the fourth, etc. And uh, we plug that in and then we get um, uh, equations for the different coefficients. Before we do that though, let's think a little bit about it because we know already a whole bunch of stuff. We know that the center manifold goes to the fixed point. Therefore, for x equals zero, y has to be zero, so h zero is zero. And we know that the center manifold is tangential to the center eigenspace, which in this case is the x-axis. That implies that the derivative of h with respect to x is zero. There's a horizontal slope here, right? So we can right away uh, take these terms out with any without any further calculation and life is now easier. And so this is always the case, right? So this equation h of x is always strictly nonlinear. It has no constant and no linear terms because of this tangency condition. Okay, but now we have to bite the bullet and plug in. Uh, it's getting a little bit complicated, but it's not so bad. So dh by dx, right? We insert now this guy over there and, oh no, I should say actually over here and plug everything in. Okay, so dh by dx is 2h2x plus 3h3x squared plus 4h4x cubed. That's dh by dx times x times h, x times h2x squared plus h3x cubed plus h four x to the fourth. I really should have, you know, indicated that we have in principle higher order terms, which you just don't keep right now. Okay, so we have, what do we have now? We have x, x times h minus gamma x cubed, okay, minus gamma x cubed. That's the left hand side is equal to, um, let me move that up a little bit, need space, is equal to minus h, which is minus h2x squared minus h3x cubed minus h4x to the fourth plus x squared minus h squared, oh my gosh, this is going to be a lot of terms, h2x squared plus h3x cubed plus h4x to the fourth the end. Okay, well, as I said, there's an expansion in x, so we just have to compare equal powers in x left and right. So let's see, what do we have? The lowest order term must be an x squared because the, there is no uh, linear terms in h. Okay, so we have an x squared here, and we have, oh, I forgot here something. This here is h squared. I forgot the square here. Okay, 
marching right on. So we have here an h x squared term, an x squared term. How about the other side? Well, this is an x, x cubed, x cubed. So this thing is, the left hand side is already order x cubed. So we get actually at order x squared, we get on the left hand side zero, on the right hand side we get minus h2 plus one. Of course, this means h2 is equal to one. That's nice. Okay, order x cubed. What do we get on the left hand side? As we said, this is this term is x cubed already. But these terms already have an additional x, so there's still nothing coming at order x cubed, so it's still zero. In the right hand side, we have minus h3. And then this guy is squared, so the first term is actually x to the fourth, so we have nothing else, and therefore we have h3 is equal to zero. And so let's go one more step, order x to the fourth. Now we have something on the left hand side, that's why I wanted to go that far. We have an x cubed here, we have an x cubed here, and we have an x here. So what does that do? That gives us 2h2 times h2 minus gamma, right? h2 is x cubed, gamma is x cubed, and everybody gets a factor of x over there, good. And on the right hand side, we have now x to the fourth, we have minus h4, and we have from the square here, we have minus h2 squared. This is an equation for h4, we already have h2, and so what do we see? We get h4 is equal to, <clears throat> h2 is one, so on the right hand side we have two gamma, <clears throat> minus three. Okay, so we now have our equation for the center manifold. We know how y depends on x on that center manifold. y is given by x squared plus two gamma minus three x to the fourth. Okay, well that wasn't really what we wanted. Well, we wanted that, but the real thing we wanted to have was actually the dynamics on that center manifold. So, we want to have x dot. And so the derivative x dot, now we can write it down in terms of x, and we now know what y is in terms of x. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, we have x dot is equal to uh, x times y, which is x times x squared plus two gamma minus three x to the fourth minus gamma x cubed. Did I do that right? Let me see, I mean, this may not be right. H4 is equal to two gamma minus one minus three. Oh, this is right. Okay. Okay, so we get now x cubed times one minus gamma plus two gamma minus three x to the fifth. Okay, so that's the evolution on that center manifold up to order x to the fifth. So in principle here is an order, well we don't know whether it's order six or seven, a symmetry is actually x to the seven. We could find that out, but it's not important right now. Um, so that's the evolution we have there. So what, what have we learned? Well, we've learned that, let's go back to original equation. 
In the original equation, um, if you had ignored the y term, and well, we are at the bifurcation term, so mu is equal to zero. So x would have been strictly attractive, x equals zero would have been strictly attractive because we have a minus gamma x cubed, assuming gamma is positive. But there's this xy term, and even though y is actually decaying in time, uh, we see that the evolution, eventual evolution, it has the minus gamma x cubed term, but there's also a plus x cubed term coming from the coupling to the y. And so you see that if gamma is actually smaller than one, if gamma is not large enough, so to speak, um, to cubic order, the origin is actually repelling. So this actually, uh, the flow is away from the origin. So the coupling to y really makes a difference. So this is fine, but a problem is that um, we have that equation only from u equals zero at the bifurcation point. Well, that's um, not quite enough because we want to see what happens with the solutions as you change mu. We want to see two new solutions appear and stuff like that. And if they appear, we want to know how they evolve in time and stuff like that. So this um, analysis is not quite sufficient yet. So we'll have to extend it, but we'll do that uh, in the next step.